So how do young women in particular become radicalised and why are they a particular target for IS, Islamic State? We're joined now by Shasha Havlicek of the Institute for Strategic Dialogue um, and she co-chairs an EU Internet Radicalisation Working Group. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Um, fine. What, what is the story of women and IS specifically as far as we know it? It's interesting because AXA is in a way part of a trend that's certainly growing and just over the last uh, summer we've seen um, the rise in social media activity uh, of women, mainly wives of jihadis out in Syria and now increasingly Iraq, um, doing a lot in, in the social media domain, in the Twitter sphere, in the blogosphere. Uh, to recruit and to appeal to their peers, to young women uh, across the West to come and join. And there's, there's, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon, one that we don't have enough data on. Um, but certainly what we are seeing is that they are, um, they're being used in a sense to come out and build the new state. It's about the state building of IS, of the new caliphate. Um, their role is primarily seen as domestic and in the context of, if you like, breeding the next generation uh, of jihadis. As far as we know, um, AXA seems to have married a jihadi fighter uh, soon after she arrived in Aleppo in Syria, and she's settled there. I mean, all this is, is slightly hazy, but that appears to be what has happened. Is that quite a common pattern as far as we know? Well, at the very outset, it seems that women were going out there primarily with husbands. Now what we're seeing is that they're going out to be married off out there. And IS has set up a marriage bureau. They're seeing this as a way, in a way, to sustain their troops out in the field. So, yes, you are seeing a lot of girls going out to become wives. Um, what's interesting, I mean, and, and some women have had more activist roles. As you know, they've set up a, a sort of moral police in Raqqa, which is an all-female unit. And so these are women that are sent out in the streets to... Um, remind other women of, of Islamic code and conduct. Um, so, again, there, there's a number of different roles that are being offered, although I think more limited than many of the women would have hoped on the way out. One of the things that's happening in Scotland today is that uh, those who go to Friday prayers are going to hear um, sermons, uh, conversations uh, about the dangers of radicalisation um, an appeal for the safety of hostages and also a, a, an urging from Muslim leaders that all families who see this happening or who suspect that it should be happening uh, should report it and contact the authorities. What is your view about progress, if that's the right word, in, uh, uh, against this kind of radicalization of the sort that Aksa Max Mahmoud has, has been influenced by? It's very difficult because a lot of this now is really happening online, where, where radicalization would have happened through offline networks traditionally over the, you know, over the many, over the many years that we've seen this problem emerging in the, in the UK. Um, you're seeing more and more of this, especially with, with girls happening in the, in the internet space. And, and in part because the internet offers sort of anonymity and they're able to be, they're, they're able to have agency in ways that offline networks wouldn't have offered them. So like with kids across the board, how many parents really know what their kids are doing yeah. um, on the Internet and the ways in which they're communicating on there? There's a real danger there that this is on the rise. I think the real issue here is that this isn't completely organic. This is, this is very well orchestrated by IS top down. They've got a fantastically sophisticated media strategy, online strategy, and they're using women to do the outreach to other women now uh, very successfully. Sasha, have a let check of the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Thanks very much for joining us.